Hi, I'm Scott Caesar. Good morning. It is for freedom that Christ has come to set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Do not let. We have a responsibility to that. Jesus came to set you free from the lies you believe. And as we read in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, there are strongholds. And the definition of a stronghold is, say it with me, a lie believe, then live. Say that with me again. Definition of a stronghold is a lie believe, then live. And then we, we spoke about in the first week, how, say how, how do you pull down strongholds? How, say how, how, how do I recognize the lies and replace them with truth? And we went into that, and I highly recommend you go back and view that video if that's not perfectly clear to you what a stronghold is in your life. It's not, it's not if you have a stronghold in your life. It's what stronghold is in your life. Turn a man next to you and say he's talking to you. Yeah, because the only human being that was ever stronghold free was Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. And then we went to the man who does not take his thoughts captive will be taken captive by his thoughts, by his thoughts. We spoke there and we said, how do I take thoughts captive? How do I take thoughts captive? And I shared my story with you of, of my struggle with thoughts and anxiety and, and way too much stuff that I struggle with for a guy that's in the Bible every day and talks to Jesus every day and I, how I disappoint myself almost every week. It used to be every day. Now I'm, now I'm maturing. Now I only disappoint myself every week because I don't compare myself to men. I compare myself to Christ. And I'm always falling short. So I need that grace every day. How about you? Most men spend their entire Christian experience letting their past intimidate their present. They allow who they were in the flesh to intrude on who they now are in Christ, on who they now are in Christ. And you know what? After sitting with counselors and then figuring out, Scott, this is what's wrong with you. You're so afraid of who you are and who you sometimes are in the flesh that you're too afraid to become who you are. And they would look at me and go, don't you know God gave you clean hands and a pure heart based upon your obedience to Christ? Gentlemen, this was my story. When a Christian man still clings to the standards and values of this world, he may be saved, but he will not experience freedom. He will not experience freedom. Let me ask you some very detailed questions. Would you like to know how to take away ungodly thoughts, in which we spoke about last week? How about reordering your loves, giving up so you could be a disciple of Christ? reordering your loves how about putting off old man habits of sin how about laying aside every weight and sin that hinders us from living the godly life as sin is defined as anything that gets in the way of living a spirit-filled life that's in hebrews 12:1. How about learning and having the power to say no to ungodly standards and values? How about Jesus when he says, unless you deny yourself, you cannot be my disciple. Would you like to know how to deny yourself? And how about the ultimate, how to die to self? You just read, you can't get by Romans 6 without trying to wrap your mind around what Galatians 2.20 says. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives through me, in me. The life I now live in this flesh, I now live what? By faith. I now live by in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. 
How about to abide in the freedom that we spoke about that Christ gave us? Well, can I get a sign up for that class? Can I get a sign? Well, in the next 15 minutes, my job is to tell you how to do all. You ever see these things? Oh, lose weight, feel wonderful, love your wife again, do all this again. But this is all true, what I'm giving you. This is not an ad that we're putting in the daily news. I'm going to tell you why you have the key to do all this. And I won't give you a word like surrender, submit, you know, read your Bible more and, uh, and, and pray harder and rearrange your life. Or and I'm not going to give you anything like that. Although those are all important. We spoke about how to take thoughts captive by renouncing last week. And we spoke about that leading to freedom. And today the freedom code says this, the man who confesses sin receives forgiveness. The man who renounces sin receives freedom. Gentlemen, renunciation is the key. The word renounce is the key. You said, Scott, you've, you've mentioned this word a lot. And when we're on MDM, we hear it a lot because it's what took me out of my agreements with the kingdom of darkness. It's what took the spiritual powers that I don't know how I did it, but I rearmed what Jesus disarmed. And scripture tells me I can do that. Scripture tells me I could give place to the devil. I could give opportunity to the devil. And my three enemies, the devil, society, and the worst public enemy, number one, is my flesh. Uh, Audie just walked in and, you know, I think of his flesh. Oh, does he struggle? Oh, my goodness. You see, but this key word, renunciation, who came up with this? Where did it come from in scripture? Well, it came from our model in the desert. Jesus, after he was baptized, after the, 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 the words, the platinum and gold words of Father God fell upon him and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It was the start of his ministry, right? He comes up, you've seen it in, on TV, you've seen it and you've read it in Matthew 4, and he comes out. And just when things are about to launch and everything looks rosy, what happens next? The Spirit of God led him in to the desert to be tempted. Now, this wasn't, you know, Jones Beach desert type thing. This was nasty. Then he's fasted 40 days. Okay, which I don't know, you want to compare you to Jesus? I know some of you. You can't go an hour or two without eating. <laughs> Jesus, you know, and then we rationalize it. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you there. Jesus is in his 40th day. 40th day. A decathlon champion had nothing on him. 40th day. Then he gets tempted by Satan. And here's, here's where we go. Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days, he was hungry. The tempter came to him, if, say if. if. If you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered. I love that. Jesus answered. There should be a whole book called Jesus Answered. I like Jesus recognized, Jesus renounced, Jesus retaliated, and then, believe it or not, Jesus rested, it tells us. And what Jesus does here, I'm not going to go through reading this because most of you know the story. Every time Satan hit him with a temptation, all three times, Jesus answered with it is written. Say that with me, if you will. It is written. You see, that's where your faith is pulled from, knowing scripture. You see, there's information, and that's, that's kind of my job. I, I bring you the information. God's job, in what I, my job here on Thursdays, God's job is to give you revelation. 
You see, because information does not lead to transformation of a man's life, only revelation. You see, and once you understand it, after it's said 30 times, God comes in and goes, bink, because divine persuasion is something that God gives you. He creates divine desires in you. It tells us in Philippians 2.13. See, you think you're running along and get more godly when he's giving you more of a himself you can't figure out why you love him so darn much you can't figure out why you serve him so darn much you just can't help it that's divine persuasion you see jesus here was tempted not to sin jesus was tempted in all our ways jesus never reached areas of temptation that well, although the Bible says he was tempted in all that ways. What does that mean then? What does that mean? Jesus, when a woman bowed down before him and showed a little uh, Hebraic ancient cleavage, okay, when a, when a woman bowed down, did Jesus say, wow, if I had that? Did Jesus say, wow, if I get that, then I'll be this, then I'll feel this, then I'll do this. You see, when that lady bent down, Jesus would have had to believe a lie. He would have had to believe the lie that says, she's more important, my pleasure is more important than God. He would have had to believe, it's okay, no one will know. You see, Jesus was 100% truth. He was 100% truth. He didn't have to do that. He had to believe you deserve a break today. 40 days. He had to listen to this. Look at you, your skin and bones. Use your power to satisfy yourself with a whopper. You deserve a break today. He had to listen to that, not, not to think to use his power when it wasn't his time. Then he had to believe, uh, how do you believe what? Are you really the son of God? He got questioned. He's a really son of God. He knew he was a son of God. There was no, when someone, when, when I get a thought going, are you really a Christian? Are you a son of God, Scott? I actually pause for a second. When I say, am I acting like a Christian? Was that really how Christian acts? And I beat myself up. You see, Jesus did not have to go through that. He said, does your God really care about you and will protect you in the second one? And the third one, if you just live the balanced life, Jesus, I have the power to bless you, Satan, which he does. And Adam gave him the power and authority in the God. I have the power to bless you, Satan says, and I will give you earthly success. If you just live a balanced life, one of love that all my people of this earth can relate to. Balance, relate to be tolerant, love each other. Look at your friends. You know, the ones that went to rabbi college. They're doing good. They're so successful. Be like them. Be like them. You see, Jesus dominated the devil in the desert for a reason. He dominated the devil in the desert for a reason. He was never deceived. Why? Because he knew the truth. Hear me out here. Is our model. He knew the truth about his foes, friends, his fight, his freedom, his fate, his flesh, his faith. His faith. It is not a good fight of obedience. It's a good fight of faith. We'll talk about that next week. Jesus answered, it is written. You see, because God's word recognizes the lie god's word renounces the lie and god's word replaces the lie and i know i've given to you this uh, all last week but i can't i must give it to you again it is important to define the word renounce renouncing renunciation that i do steve to break an agreement allegiance or affection with ungodly standards and values 
Remember we said before, the reason we're not free is because we're Christian men adhering to a, uh, to a code of love, a code of ethics, if you may, a code of heart. We're Christian men, but we cling to things of the world. We take sports. We take our family. We take so many good things and put it before God. And that's why we don't have freedom. Well, am I not supposed to love my freedom? Sure, y'all. Am I not supposed to pull some of my identity from my, from my family? Well, yeah, you can't help that. You pull it from your job. It, it, it's something we all do, but not before your identity in Christ. Amen. Not before your identity in Christ. The Bible says grace trains us to renounce ungodliness. It says he who conceals his sins does not prosper. Now, when I say sins, I just want you to get this in your head. I'm not talking about you lusting after woman. I'm talking about your disordered, my disordered loves. That's all I'm talking about. The things we put before God, the good. And when a man makes a good thing, a God thing, it becomes a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Here it says, whoever confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Now, I want you to understand this. Renouncing is the disarming of Satan in Jesus' name after rearming him by our shame. I'm going to say that again. Renouncing is the disarming of Satan in Jesus' name after rearming him by our sins. It could be Satan. It could be self. Do not give the devil the power to do something he cannot do on his own. Satan says this, you failed. So you are a failure. And you're not there yet, but most of us go, I am a failure. I screwed up that marriage. I screwed up that kid. I screwed up that job. I screwed up my finances. I'm a lazy man. You see, when the you are accusation becomes I am, strongholds exist. That's an agreement we make. And you've made not only a psychological mental agreement, you've made a spiritual agreement with the kingdom of darkness that is unseen, that is talked about as much as reality. as false reality. You see, the unseen world is more of a reality than the seen world. You'll find that out. You know, we don't want to find out too quick right now, but uh, you know what I'm talking about. So he calls you and he accuses you and we start agreeing. But how do we renounce it? Where does it come from? What, what do we do? We go back to that really attractive question. Would you like to know how to do all of this? Take away my ungodly thoughts. Reorder my loves. Put off. Lay aside. Say no. Deny self. Well, Scott, if I could just do this, I'd be free. I'd be happier. I'd be powerful. I'd be witnessing for God. Well, I'm going to show you a slide, and I want to make one point. I don't want to be made fun of for this slide, but I, I want you to look at some. Now, I have found out, and it has been my joy, because I found out after renouncing my agreements, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, renouncing my agreements, that I am free. This is a process. You don't get free on a Tuesday and it lasts forever. Renouncing is a process. It's a lifestyle as confession is a lifestyle to sin. Renouncing is a lifestyle to lies believed. Okay? To as confession is a lifestyle to sin involving sin so renunciation, renounce, the act, the verb to renounce is that to 
lies believe, two strongholds. And uh, what you see here is the biblical word renounce. When we go to 2 Corinthians 10, 5, what does it say? What, what is it? It says, take away all thoughts. Well, guess what one Greek lexicon says? Take away means renounce. When it speaks in Luke 14, 33, it says, so therefore, any one of you doesn't give up all that he, that he has cannot be my disciple. The word give up. What does the ESV call it? Renounce. Anyone who doesn't renounce. I love put off. You know, like Paul just talks about it so easy in Ephesians. Put off all this. Put off all this and put on. What do you think the word put off means? In the Greek, renounce. How many want to put off a little more? Renounce. I'm going to skip the next one because I'm going to come back to that. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Greek English dictionaries. What does the word deny yourself mean? It's the same word for saying no in uh, Titus. Deny yourself. Renounce yourself. What does that mean? Renounce your self-rule over your life. Yeah, break the agreement you made with the kingdom of darkness. You don't have to be in control. It's a lie. It's not only a lie, it's an illusion and a stronghold. You can't be in control, only God can. Follow me here. Lay aside every weight and sin that hinders you. That Hebrews 12, what do you think lay aside means? Renounce. I've made this chart and I've actually put which dictionaries I found this in. I've actually put the resources and Bible versions that are in this. This blessed me. It gave me so much power to renounce lies that I believe because I would just throw scripture at it like Eve did. Eve threw scripture at Satan. But it's not the scripture you know, it's the scripture you believe. It's not the scripture you know, it's the scripture you believe. You see, information yields very little power. I know it says knowledge is power, but revelation is the sword of the spirit. You cut off every lie's head with that. Lay aside. Here's my favorite. I get stuck in Romans 6 all the time. Lord, give me greater revelation to die to self, to have the old man die, to be crucified with Christ. Lord, I want, I want you so much more, Father. Guess what the word die is? Renounce. You see, dying to self is, I hate to use the word simply, is simply surrendering, submitting. Dying to self is simply renouncing anything that comes before God. It's simply renouncing anything you think you are that God says you're not. It's simply renouncing any accusation that says you are and making it a I am. It doesn't matter how we feel at times, although feelings are important. It matters what reality is. The Greek word of truth means reality. And so many men live in false realities. The word say no to sin. It's renounced in the English Standard Version. It's renounced. I never heard of this word. I came upon it accidentally. Someone looked at me and said, Scott, you got to renounce I go, well, what do you mean renounce? And they took me through this whole thing. See, man of God, first you renounce with Father God. Then you renounce with the brotherhood. Oh, you don't want to do that alone with the brotherhood. Yeah, I know it. I know it. But that's where the power of God comes over. Confess, renounce your sins to your brother, and you will be healed. You will be healed. Oh, that second one is hard. Telling another guy, I really don't have the confidence in myself that I really think, because my dad told me I was stupid my whole life. My dad, you know, my dad drank and he didn't, he didn't do this. You see, 
my, my mom told me I'm never going to get anywhere. I never had a relationship with my mom. So I lusted after women all this time. And then this and this and this. I'm renouncing that now. I'm no longer God. I want to live in freedom. I want to live in freedom. One more spot for renounce. And I'm going to leave you here. When he had, it says in Colossians, Colossians 2.15, speaking about Jesus. When he had disarmed and stripped the rules and authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us. This is Colossians 2.15. What do you think disarm means? Renounce. That's how you disarm lies. This is how you pull down strongholds. This is how you take away patterns of thinking. Now, this is not psychological, although there's a mental aspect to it. This is not only physiological, meaning, you know, the patterns of thinking and the, uh, uh, the biology of your brain. It is. This is spirituality. Because renouncing is the disarming of Satan in Jesus' name, hear me out, after rearming him by our shame. I don't know if I wrote that down. Renouncing is the disarming of Satan in Jesus' name by his power. You can't do it on your own. That's for sure. In Jesus' name, after, after rearming him by our shame, Adam armed him. Jesus disarmed him. Joe Harry said, Bill Scotts, we rearm him with our shame, where the you are turns into an I am. And now we have to disarm him again. And here's the good part. It's already been done. We just have to agree and walk with it and activate it. In regards to understanding and believing your role to renounce ungodly ways in your life, do you have one question about renunciation that is still on your mind? Just one that's unclear that you would ask. If you had someone sitting next to you that knew about this, what was the one question you would ask? That's what we're going to talk about today in our breakout sessions. Because m my job that God gave me, I asked him where he wanted to land, was to make sure there's not a doubt in your mind how important renunciation is in your life. And here's the great part about it. You're not going to follow through with this without a seal team, without a buddy, without a guy talking about renunciation. Because I'm telling you, this is how you get free. You're dragged down because of those lies, but this is how you get free. Do you have one question? One question. That's just not clear about renunciation. I want you to speak about that one question with your guys and just bring that up. Father God, I thank you that we're men who do not walk by feeling, but walk by faith. Thank you, Lord, for bringing what is real into perspective today. Thank you for revelation, the spirit of revelation, Lord. Now give us the spirit of wisdom, like Paul asked for the Ephesian guys, to know what to do with that revelation. In Jesus' name. Love you guys.